Uh, hello, my name is Clive Scott, and this is part 22 of a course on Java, and it's about local classes, uh, which are a specific type of nested class. Um, as you can see, this is the uh, third of a set of four uh, courses on um, nested classes, and um, I'm going to assume that you've uh, seen the one on um, static member classes and non-static member classes. Okay, so uh, what are local classes? Well, um, the local class is defined as one that's declared in a method, a constructor, or a block. In other words, um, the same sort of position as um, local variables. Uh, so what can we say about them? Well, first of all, um, the class name is only accessible within the method constructor or block uh, like local variables, in other words, and um, just like local variables, uh, local classes are never given access qualifiers, uh, nor are they ever declared as being static. Having said that though, if the method is static, or it's a static initialization block, then the local class, if you declare one in it, is implicitly static. Otherwise, of course, it's non-static. And of course, if it's non-static, it needs an instance of the enclosing class. Now, lastly, there's one extra thing they can do, and that is local classes uh, can access local variables if those local variables are final and only if they're final right here's uh, an example down here uh, and it's uh, a non-static example so we've got a top level class there and in it we've got this method method 2 starts there and it ends there and inside method 2 we've got this class declaration and presumably down here is some code to create instances of that class and manipulate and whatever. Right, the first thing to notice is that it's a it's a non-static local class. Um, and it's non-static because this method that it's declared in is non-static. Uh, and it uh, extends A, but uh, it's another matter. Right, so one of the first things we can see is that um, this will, that line there, will, will generate a compiler error, which is why I've commented it out. And um, that's because you're not allowed to declare um, static um, fields within a local class. And in fact, um, as a general rule, you can say that um, the only nested class which can have static fields or static methods is a static member class. Okay, no other nested class can can have them, and that it, that that applies also to ones that I haven't discussed yet. Okay, now um, what can we say about this? This will obviously that will generate an error as well. Therefore, that will also give a compiler error. And then this down here, if we look at it, um, uh, here's something which accesses L there, and uh, L is uh, that counts as local, it's a parameter that's being passed into this method. So it counts as being local, and it is not final, so that will give an error. And here again, with this N here, uh, that's a local variable, and it, it's not final, so that will give an error as well. Both of those will cause compiler errors. On the other hand, if we look at this, um, you know, we've got uh, called a method one, and uh, we can certainly access that even though it's private, because it's in the enclosing class. And uh, this is a non-static local. And uh, if we look at i and j. i and j are uh, there, and they're accessible. There's no problem with that. If we look at k, k 
k is uh, accessible because although it's local it's final so we can access that and here we've got ai and aj which uh, come from the super class there and uh, there's no problem accessing that and in fact um, this uh, this local class here which extends a super class can will behave just well behaves exactly like any other class extending a class so it can access anything in the super class and of course this super class here can um, can include static stuff there's no problem you can certainly inherit static stuff into this uh, local and um, here we've got uh, M and uh, M is uh, final, a local final as well and we can access that now obviously um, to access these uh, in the enclosing class it's going to use uh, this dollar zero uh, to refer to an instance of the um, enclosing class which of course is going to enable you to get it any statics and non-statics and the usual rules apply you know if it's private you're going to need access methods and that sort of thing and if it's static um, uh, then uh, uh, if it's static yes you just need an access uh, uh, access method uh, which is not going to require an instance of the class in that case because it's static uh, if it's non static of course it does need an instance of the, of the class a usual sort of stuff well, that's all should, should be fairly obvious uh, right um, finally let's just note this um, if you're uh, if you're outside the class here, like in this method here, uh, you can't uh, you can't use um, that class because that class uh, it, the name itself, the class name, is only known within method two. So you can't use it in method one. Um, now, um, although you can't use um, the name outside the method, that that doesn't mean that any instances that are created disappear. Uh, when you leave the uh, when you leave the class well, when you leave the uh, method rather and um, uh, the reason for that if you think about it is um, we could for instance have a uh, field out here of type A and this thing which extends A means that uh, some code in here could create an instance of that uh, local class and uh, store a reference to it in a, in a field of type A and uh, then of course this method out here method uh, 1 could uh, could certainly use A so uh, instances of that class don't necessarily disappear when you leave that method uh, finally just to emphasize down here um, yeah what I really mean by this is um, uh, implicit static or explicitly static classes um, have no reference to the well to an instance of the enclosing class yeah, that's what I really mean if I'm being pedantic but uh, that doesn't fit in exactly so I, well you know what I mean anyway